And I think that actually helped during the NEO and the retrograde because that was exactly a year after weapons school graduation for me. And so I've been a tier one at the wing for a year doing tactics and training. And then this all started to kick off and I was actually at a Intel and tactics conference at Scott doing Intel work with uh, one of our wing patches there for Intel. And we started seeing kind of some plans pop up. Mm. And I started looking at all of the different plans and it was my friends, like all of my patch friends who had just graduated literally in the last class or the class before that. And I'm seeing Shade Radakovich and Drift Barry on there and I was like, what is going on? And they're like, <laughs> all right, we're looking at reopening airfields in Afghanistan, we're looking at all of that. And so I went back and I remember talking to my wing commander about it. I was like, hey, sir, have you, have you heard any of this stuff? And he was like, no. And so that's where really as a patch, you start kind of realizing the gravity of just the network and the information you get and then how you owe it to your leadership to keep them informed on what you know and to be able to counsel when they ask, at least to keep yourself smart. So we started talking back and forth on it and it was my leadership that gave me the heads up of, hey, the thing we talked about is gonna, gonna start going just a little bit different. And I was at a wedding in California. Of course. We're enough on, I was just down there for the weekend. Everybody knew like, hey, I'm going down here. I'll be back on Sunday night. And I got the text on Saturday morning, like, hey, stuff's happening. And so I called my DO of my, the flying squadron immediately. And I was like, what do you need? Like, how can I help? What do you need? put me on a jet. And he's like, okay, we have crews going out today. They took a whole bunch of crews, shoved them on a jet and sent them out. But he's like, I'm going to put you on an alert line, a Bravo line that's probably either going to launch Sunday night or Monday. I was like, all right, let me know. I'm in California. I'll fly back. These are my flights that I can jump on. Let me know. And he's like, okay, I'll give you more fidelity. And I was like, I would like to go to my friend's wedding, but if it's not possible, they're yeah. in the military, they get it to you. <laughs> yeah, like, you understand. know how it is. <laughs> I ended up going to the wedding. Funny enough, the guy sitting next to me was literally also in a Bravo line flying out from Travis. And so we're talking about it. We're like, okay, I'll see you out there. Um, I flew home on Sunday. When I landed literally almost to the minute, I hit crew rest. Um, it was it was insane. Like, it was that tight. Went into crew rest. But the thing was, like, one of the biggest takeaways I had from this is you need to be prepared at all times. Like there was things like people needed their ISO preps, but more so gear. So there was a few like min requirements in my mind, what we needed as air crew. We needed NVGs, so night vision goggles. We needed to be able to have guns because we knew that we would be doing a Neo type scenario and for packs loading. And then I knew that I needed some sort of access to briefs, tactical material. So I needed we have, at that point, it was a CF-19, so it was a classified computer. I was like, that is my min force. Like, I will step out the door with that as my min force, which you would think would be pretty easy normally, but not when you have just sent like 20 something crews out the door and everything had been pillaged. So I remember coordinating before, like when I'm getting on my flight to fly back, telling the load masters, hey, I need you to grab this. I need you to grab that. Um, I need you to find the gun. So they pulled everything, thankfully a day prior, because if we would have alerted and gone out, like there would have yeah. been nothing left. So they had that. 